if this is your idea of a jolt, Carl, I am not laughing. Come on, it's been a long day. Uh, I just want to talk. <sighs> oh, and you can't talk and drive at the same time? On our own, without people poking their noses in. With the doors locked. <laughs> Sorry, force of habit. Estelle, I'm so sorry about the other night. Yeah, you said. With flowers, which you dumped. I don't want flowers. I don't want presents. Well, what do you want? I want you to leave me alone. Stop texting me. Stop ringing me. In fact, you know what I really want, Carl? I want you to start a new life for yourself. Not like you have. Like I'm trying to do. I find myself a younger bird. Younger, older, I don't care. Just as long as she makes you happy. You've got a lot to offer, Carl. <laughs> Nearly choked you to say that. I mean it. Our days are gone, Carl. You've got to accept it and move on. Move on? Why is everyone obsessed with moving on? I mean, what is so wrong with standing still and appreciating what you've got? Memories. That's all you've got, Carl. And you've only yourself to blame. Now, you were booked as a driver, so can you just drive on, please? Carl? Hey! <laughs> Used to be someone. Is Dad not picking you up? How could he? He doesn't know I'm here. You think he doesn't know you're here? Monday's his quiz night. They lost in the tie break last week. To the wheat sheaf. Why hope they win tonight? For your sake. It's quiet in here. Where's Tyrone? Kirsty. You shouldn't have come. He's away. They all used to say that. He'd knock on the door with a warrant. Is Danny Scumbag in? And Mrs. Scumbag would say he's away. Like he's lying on a beach at Alba Fiora. Tyrone's in prison, Mum. Enjoy the quiet while it lasts. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it is my fault and I should walk away. But where? I've got a job here, mates. <laughs> Not as many as I used to have, I admit. I've asked you to move away. No, but you wish I would. Lots of people split up and still live near each other. It can work. I mean, look at Sally and Kevin. Dev and Sunita. No, their marriages were done for already. They can live and let live. They're past caring. No. Yeah, maybe I could as well, eventually, if I knew that you and Jason were going somewhere. Well, who's to say we're not? <laughs> I'm serious, Carl. No, you're doing this for kicks and to rub my face in it. Oh, and there's me feeling sorry for you. You think the whole world revolves around you, don't you, Carl? You know, if your friends aren't warning you, then they're not your real friends. You'll get bored. Oh, thanks. You'll get bored. He'll want kids. His eye will roam. Whichever way you shake it, it's doomed. But if you took me back again... Oh, you're like a broken record. I would never look at another woman again. You must be boring yourself, Carl. I mean it. It's too late. It's too late. Go on. Say it. Not the lovely Tyrone. No one believed it for ages. They heard the rouse next door, but he said I had the temper. Then the neighbours found me at the bottom of the stairs in my wedding dress. They called for help and they realised then that I could have died. They didn't call us. Neither did the hospital. Why? We're still your next of kin. Spit it out, Mum. That's not the real question. What you really want to know is why you weren't invited to the wedding. No, look, you must have had your reasons. I don't blame you. If Ruby did that to me, cut us out, I... I couldn't bear it. I'm upset you. I am upset, but not because of that. <sighs> How could it happen? You, of all people, falling for a man just like your dad. If it wasn't so embarrassing, it'd be tragic. Unbelievable. And not a word all this time. That's not something you broadcast, as you well know. But now everyone must know. He'll be in the papers, your present charges. It was Ruby. I knew he'd turn on her eventually. 
had to get him out of our lives. Hey. Oh, Mummy, Mummy, we have been a busy, a busy business. So come along, sit down and close those eyes. Close those eyes. Okay, now listen, two whole hours they have spent doing this. Okay, so I love it. Right? Shh, come on, get to place. Come on, ready? Okay, okay. Open them. Hit it. It's a hard not life for us. It's a hard not life for us. Hang on. Oh, my gosh, Dev. These are his new school trousers, and this is a designer jumper. But, but the guy, you said that she said that you could, guys, you promised me this was just like old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, High five. <laughs> is this funny? <laughs> this isn't funny. This is not funny! You think I'm rubbing your nose in it? Well, try and see it from my side. The man I love humiliates me in the most public way possible and expects me to pretend it never happened. Well, if it's just your pride. Just. That's him again, isn't it? It's none of your business. Why don't you want to speak to him? I'll speak to him when I get home. If I get home. Hey, come on. You really scared me the other night, you know. I know. I'm so sorry. Really? I had you down as a lot of things, Carl, but never a bully. Where's it all going to end? Where's your pride? You're better than this. Yeah, I am. Let me go. It's because Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie, he wants to adopt her. Annie? The daughter of a millionaire? The daughter of a billionaire. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Right, and then you walk out of Miss Hannigan's office, stop, make him wait, and... You scared him. Oh, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, you're too convincing, love. You are the star of the show. Who cares? It's not like anyone will see me. Hiya. Tim. Ooh. Can I come in? Yeah, come on. Look, I can't stop. But, um, listen, I've told the lads to get another striker on Friday. Can you still get the ticket? For Annie? Yeah. Too right. You're going to love it. Curtain up, 6.30. Don't be late. Okay. Cheers, Owen. Cheers, self Thank you. Any luck at the bistro? Thought she'd gone straight there, but she hasn't. Yeah, she's OK. Stella, she's a big girl. Yeah, of course she is. The night of the party, I swear, there was this, like, connection. I know, I'll keep it on the down low, but do you think I stand a chance? Has it got a girlfriend? God, you're all after him. <laughs> uh, she would not dare. <laughs> anyway, it's Bill. Um, well, I don't think he's on the lookout. Has he said that? He wants to stay a free agent. Well, you work with him. What else do you talk about? No. Price of pitta. <laughs> Just go for it. Buying a big mat to knock a back. Yeah, you're gorgeous. Oh. Everything I did was rubbish. Everything I said, stupid. They checked the mileage on the car when I'd been out. You left Ruby with him, though, to go back to work. So? Was that before you thought he might lose his rag with her? Yeah. Oh, he was so convincing. When I came to stay after that falling out with your dad, he welcomed me with open arms, not like a man who had something to hide. He knew he wasn't coping. So did you. But you still went off to work. That must have been hard. Didn't want to believe it. He could have turned to you. Too proud. He did love Ruby, though. <laughs> Doesn't Dad love you? Isn't that why you go back to him time after time? You're not saying that just because you hit someone, you can't look... You can't love them. Maybe I was kidding myself. It wouldn't be the first time. Baby, you can take off your coats. I wish that was all we'd taken off. Good rehearsal. Yeah, it was brilliant. Jono was nearly in tears. Tony is one tough taskmaster. However, thanks to her, we have got our moves off pad. Might show you later. If you ask me nicely. I'm all right, thanks, Snooker's on. So, will Tony be getting a kit off, or is that a big secret too? What do you mean? 
months she's been working at the station. Years for all I know. And only today do I find out that Anthony is really Antonia. What difference does it make? None, if you've been up front from the start. Really? So tell me this rehearsal, um, and she's stripping down with the rest of the crew. No, she's not, because that would be sexist and exploitative. Oh, but watching you strip off for her, that's not exploitative at all, is it? Who wrote that rule book? Let me guess. Starts with a T and ends in an I. How do you do it? She squirms and whines all night for me. <laughs> it probably just feels like that all night. <laughs> Sit down, put your feet up. Tea? You must really hate Tyrone. I hate myself for falling for him. And then he falls for someone else. Yeah, not just anyone else, his ex. He used me. I helped him grieve for his wife. I taught him to trust again, then he goes and does that. In front of everyone you know. Talk about twisting the knife. I had one him punished. It's human nature. Someone hurts you deeply, you lash out. I didn't hurt him. And he didn't hurt you, did he? Not physically. Are you calling me a liar? Love. We both know you've got a temper and you won't back down. Mom. But you need to start telling the truth. to go. Love. I've been through hell. Concussed. Three broken ribs. I'll show you the x-rays. If I'd have been pushed any harder, it'd have been a broken neck, and that's the truth. That's what you told the police. Deny what you like about your own life, Mama. I won't let you do to me. You've had your revenge. Drop the charges, walk away, and let him win. Never. Kirsty, it's our fault as much as yours. It's what you saw growing up with your dad. But it's not normal. It's not healthy for Ruby. <laughs> If your dad had done this to me, lied about me, had me locked up, how would you feel? You could never forgive him, ever. Well, Ruby will feel the same. She'll cut you out as soon as she can. <laughs> Ooh, I station zebra. Can I warm us up with a little brew? You can try. Unresolved tensions. Right, well, I guess this calls for a little bit of semi-professional psychology. Hey. Don't worry, I saw it in an old episode of On Tell once. <clears throat> right, Eileen, I want you to put yourself in Paul's shoes and visualise and tell me frankly why you think he, you, feels annoyed. Frankly? Because she, me, has been acting like a jealous back. Right, <clears throat> Paul, I want you to put yourself in Eileen's kitten heels and tell me why she, you, feels like the injured party. Frankly, because she's behaving like a jealous old bag. Do you know, I knew it was too much to ask. Surely you must see Eileen's pain. What I see, Sean, is Tony, who has a husband of her own, right? A full-time job who's given up three nights a week to put this show on for a damn good cause. Eileen, however, is surrounded by fellas at work. Do I get jealous and possessive? No, because to get possessive, you have to care. I care, Eileen. How can you say that? Oh, she's younger, funnier, fitter. Says who? She's Sarah Millican with a six-pack. That's why you kept her under wraps. <laughs> Eileen, maybe... Maybe I was sketchy with the details, OK? And maybe... I don't know, I should have introduced you to put your mind at rest. She is not a threat. Eileen, it's you I love. Thank you. Stop hassling me. Babe, I'm not hassling. I've been sat here like a lemon. I got delayed, all right? Yeah, I know, so you keep saying. What's the delay? Are you going to be there all night or what? No, I'm not. I'll be home when I finish the meeting, OK? Bye. OK, see ya. Oh. I know it's a busman's holiday, but I needed a drink. Well, then allow me. What, and have you chewed my ear off about some hetero-domestic? No, thank you. Au contraire, because I've just spent the most pleasant evening in the company of my ex. And who would have thought so? 
In that case, I'll have a vodka. Large. Tina? Yeah. She says she's been held up at the brewery too busy. You mean the brewery be shut by now? No, just more crisps. No. Hey, up. How was the funeral? Oh, like burning twenties on a bonfire. <laughs> In a classy way. Well, it was what Eric would have wanted. Is so. it hell? Wasn't even karaoke. Like I say, classy. <laughs> Good turn now. Oh, yeah? Lots of women of a certain age. Yeah, should have been sponsored by Spanx. <laughs> anyway, we've done our duty. We've given them a good send-off. Aye, we did. God help the mystery comes between me and my... Sister's fine. Stick with sister. <laughs> Where's our Stella? Probably smooth some guy, big in real ale. Right, I'm getting off. I hope she's got to say it won't be worth hearing soon a bit. Oh, oh, I'll get to give you a ring, Jason. Yeah, whatever. Thanks for listening. I'm sure you have better things to do. Well, if it's helped, I'm glad. Yeah, it has. It has made me realise something, though. I was wrong. And we belong together. We belong apart. OK, I know you can't leave your job and I can't leave the Rovers, but being friends, it is just blurring the boundaries, Carl. It's not good for you. It's the only thing keeping me going. You had a life before you met me, a good life. Can't remember it. Try harder. You are confident, funny. You liked yourself. You need to try and find that man again, Carl. It's not it's that easy, is it? Look, you've said everything you could possibly say, and it's still not working. Surely you can accept that. Things need to change. No more funny drinks in the pub, no chatty calls, no texts. And if I ring up for a cab and you're the only driver there, you do not pick me up. Mm. Cold turkey. From the minute you drop me off tonight, I am dead to you. Your new life begins here. Agreed? Agreed? Do I have a choice? No. Not if you want to stay sane. Yeah. Agreed. Right. Rolfe's return, please. He didn't realise how important the play is to her. Exactly. He's useless. Yeah, until you dropped a word of advice into his ear and turned him into super. Dad, nice work. For Faye's sake, it's what she wanted. We don't give her what she wants, we give her what she needs. And right now, the last thing she needs is you polishing Tim's halo. For crying Talk about twisting things. But see, even your own grandson knows you're in the wrong. Shows it. I know, I'm going. Hey, sorry, sweetheart. Did he wake you? Were you two arguing again? Disagreeing. It's not the same thing. If you say so. Come on, up to bed. I'm serious. Don't go shelling out club prices. We've got Larga back at ours. And Shandy for little Joseph. Joseph's on a sleepover. Results. Yeah, but hopes not. We can always go to town. I'm skin. I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna call it up from yours. Good night. Looks like it's just you and me then, kid. Yeah. Good night, Chaz. Good night, guys. Good night, Randy. Good night, Katie. I loved him. You still do. We could have been perfect together. But every time we came close, he screwed it up. He just wouldn't learn. Did you shout at him? Did you hit him? With my fists, whatever came to hand. He just took it. He never hit you back. No. Once, but it wasn't here, it was more of a shove. On the stairs? In the yard. So, that night on the stairs? I slipped. I let him think it was a shove. I told him it was. I gave him blow by blow. Because he loved her and he didn't love me. Show him you're sorry. Tell the truth. I'd be finished. You'll be free. Imagine it. 
No more lies. Tell the truth. I'll be right behind you. <laughs> Make me proud. What are you going to do now? Right now, get back on the road. Keep driving. Keep positive. So? So, the end of the line. Yay. Give me some sugar. <laughs> Bye, Carl. Look after yourself. Yeah. You too. Dirty stop out. Oh, don't start, Mum. Aye, we were worried. Jason's got a right cob on. What kept you? Um, uh, new sales bloke at the brewery. Yeah, Jason was right. Well, you've got some grovelling to do, Mum. I'd give him a ring. Right, well, we're off to bed. Grief can be very draining. I'll give you chapter and verse in the morning. Same here. Including the Carl conundrum. Uh, there's nothing to tell, Mum. <laughs> Night, Mum. Night, love. Don't forget to call Jason. <sighs> A criminal case threatens the future of a small town forever as David Tennant stars in our brand new drama, Broadchurch, next on your ITV.